Welcome to the Deer Busters installation video. Today, we are going to walk you through the five steps to installing your deer fence system. Step one, installing your corners and ends. For a seven and a half or eight foot corner or end post, start by using a post hole digger or shovel to dig approximately three feet into the ground. The corner and end posts are always three feet longer than the height of your fence. Next, add the extender to the corner or end post for your seven and a half or eight foot fence that you are installing. For a six foot fence, extensions are not included. Extenders are one and a half feet long. Simply use a drill and screw to tighten the extender. Once you are finished attaching the extension, put the post into the hole. Fill the hole with concrete, spreading it evenly around the post. Then add water and mix the concrete completely. Let the concrete sit for one day to set. Then cover the concrete area with dirt. Measure one foot down the corner or end post before placing your brace bands and cups. Corner posts use two braces and end posts use one brace, which means you will need two bands and two cups for a corner post and one band and one cup for an end post. For the corner post, the brace cup should be placed at a 90 degree angle from one another so that the braces used are in the best position for optimum strength. Once in place, tighten the brace bands completely. On the corners or end posts that are not the starting or end points of your deer fencing system, remember to place the bottom tension wire guide first, before your brace bands and top tension wire guide. When finished, placing your top tension wire guide, insert the vinyl cap at the top of the corner post. Our corners and ends use a dead man system, which is used to hold the brace post tightly into place. You will want to dig a small hole where your brace post meets the ground and place a large cinder block, brick, or piece of wood to support the brace post as shown. Once in place, you can then fill the hole with dirt. Step two, post and gate frame installation. Place a string or chalk line from corner to corner to help guide you to where your line posts need to be. First decide whether you want the heavy duty line posts or the angled steel posts. The heavy duty line post is a black rounded post similar to the brace post used on your corners and ends. For the heavy duty line posts, you must take the appropriate size ground sleeve and place them every 15 to 20 feet apart. Place the drive cap on the sleeve and use a large hammer or mallet to pound the ground sleeve into the ground. When you are done, you can slip the post into the sleeve hole. The angled steel is black and forms a 90 degree angle. For angled steel posts, we recommend placing them every 12 feet. You may use a spring-loaded post driver to drive them into the ground. Hold it by its handles and use powerful vertical movements to drive it in. The post should be driven about two feet into the ground. After your posts are in place, add the bottom and top tension wire guides before inserting your vinyl cap if it is a heavy-duty line post. After you have successfully installed your corners and line posts, it's time to install any gate frame posts that you may have. Begin by assembling the top of the gate frame. 
Starting with the spreader bar, slide the two corner brackets onto the ends. Make sure the brackets are flush with the ends of the bar. Lay on a flat surface and using a 5 16th drill bit, drill two holes on either side of the spreader bar, using the holes in the corner brackets as a guide. Finish assembling the axis gate frame by attaching the post to the spreader bar. Drill holes with your 5 16th drill bit according to the holes in the corner bracket. Then, attach the posts to the bar with the provided washers, nuts, and bolts. Tighten all eight bolts. Take your finished frame and use it as a guide to mark where you want your frame to be. The length between your frame posts vary depending on the width of the gate. Dig 20 inches into the ground for each gate frame post. Place each gate frame post in the holes. Fill the holes with concrete, spreading it evenly around each gate frame post. Add water and mix the concrete completely. When the concrete is completely dry, cover the holes with dirt. Step 3. Access Gate Installation Dry fit your gate starting with your vertical sides and horizontal top and bottom. Connect the outside pieces by hand using the corner braces. Measure to find the center of the vertical sides of the gate and mark them. Place the connectors at the center mark and attach the center support bar. Secure the connectors and support bar with the 5 16th carriage bolts provided. Secure each corner bracket with four self-tapping screws. Hook the turnbuckles, which are located on the ends of the tension wire, in the center hole of the corner brackets on each side of the top of your gate. Feed the tension wire through the wire clamp, then loop the wire through the corner bracket on the opposite side. Feed the line through the wire clamp again. Take the slack out of the line and tighten the wire clamp securely. Repeat on the other side. Next, evenly tighten turnbuckles, keeping the gate square. Lay out enough fence to cover the gate frame. Use wire cutters to trim the excess plastic around the gate. Fasten the deer fence to the gate frame using self-locking ties every 6 to 8 inches. Then, use the cutter puller tool to tighten self-locking ties, then trim the excess tail off the ties. On the side of your gate, measure 18 inches from the top and 18 inches from the bottom. Attach one female hinge at each 18 inch mark, using the nuts and bolts provided. On the opposite side, attach your gate latches, making sure your gate latches are 18 inches from the top and bottom. Attach using the nuts and bolts provided. 
with the padlock hole on the latch at the bottom. Attach the male hinges at the appropriate heights on your gate frame using the nuts and bolts provided. The gate is now ready to hang. Line up the female and male hinges and hang the gate onto the frame. Step 4. Installing Tensioning Systems While we are showing you how to install the top monofilament line, we recommend that you start with the bottom. Begin by feeding the end of your monofilament line through one side of the connection sleeve. Wrap the monofilament around the corner or end post at the top of the post. Use the crimping tool to crimp the sleeves so that the monofilament wire is secure. Line the connection sleeve up with the appropriate notch on the crimper and close the handles. Trim any excess wire. If you are using the tension wire guide clamps on your corners and line posts, run the wire through the eye bolt, then terminate at the end of your structure with a connection sleeve. To tighten your line, there are two ways to proceed. First is using a gripple. The gripple can be used to connect two separate pieces of tension wire. To tighten, use the gripple tightening tool. Insert each wire end into the holes on either side of the gripple. Lock the gripple into the tightener and open the tightener. Then, simply close the gripple tool to tighten the line. This should tighten the line and then cut off any excess wire. The second way is with a round monofilament tightener. To tighten this way, you must use the tightener tool. To tighten using the round monofilament tightener, you run the line through the center of the tightener. Then, use the tightening tool in the back of the tightener to twist it until it is taut. Use the two ends of the tool to hold it into place. Then use the metal clip to keep it from unraveling. If you are not using the tension wire guide clamps on your post, Crisscross two self-locking ties, forming an X around the post and the monofilament wire, to further secure in place. Use a tie cutter and puller tool to tighten ties and trim the excess plastic. Step 5. Installing the fence. Secure the fence to your post by using 5 to 6 self-locking ties per post. Use 14-inch ties for deluxe heavy-duty posts, driveway gate ends, or corner posts. Use the 8-inch self-locking ties to secure angle steel posts to the fence. Use a tie puller and cutter tool to tighten the ties and trim the excess plastic. In order to keep your fence as taut as possible, you should keep it rolled up and let it feed out as you go along. We recommend at least two people for installing your fence for a quicker and safer installation. Once all the fencing is in place and tightened to the posts, cut out around the door of your gate. Then remove the excess fence. Then, attach the top and bottom of the monofilament wire using hog rings. Hog rings should be used approximately every 12 inches. This gives the fence greater stability and keeps it from sagging. Hog ring pliers will allow the proper stapling of the hog ring to the fence. Ground stakes are a very important part of your deer fence installation. Deer will often try to push under your fence to get at your plants and your garden. Secure the bottom of your fence with ground stakes placed every 5 feet along the fence line. There are two kinds of stakes you can use. The kinked stakes are for the normal softer soils. The heavy duty rebar stakes are ideal for rockier clay soils. Finally, you should put warning banners halfway up the fence. This lets the deer see the fence so that they won't hit it. We recommend that you tie one pre-cut strip every 10 feet at the 4 foot level. For more information about installing your deer fence or the products that you have seen in this video, visit www.deerbusters.com.